Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to take a look at the net install service that's built into OS X Server. Now, net install allows you to create uh, images, uh, whether those are images that you would boot machines from or images that you would use to install the operating system, right, OS X. Uh, or uh, an image that you would have that would be a complete image of a, a machine that you would use to restore uh, one of your Macs to uh, a particular disk image. And so net install allows you to do that and then it lets you boot those machines into those images and then have uh, those different restores or installs happen. And so it's a, it's a great asset to have on server, especially if you've got to install OS X on various machines. You can have people boot from these images, install, uh, the operating system onto their machines and it will go the way that you want it to. So I'm going to show you how that works uh, with the um, uh, image utility. So here we are inside the net install uh, service. And what happens is, is you can, um, again, you notice it's offline. Uh, we've got a settings tab and a connections tab. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. So on the settings tab, uh, we've got this storage locations button. If I just hit edit locations, I get this drop down. And it has me choose where I want to store uh, the images that I'm going to create. And it tells me that images need to be placed in a library netboot, netboot SP0 uh, configuration, and the same for the client data. Now I happen to have that on my Drobo, so I'm going to go ahead and come in here and say images and client data. Again, you can specify you know, what, what you want stored where, and so that is kind of nice in case you don't have a volume that has enough space. You can kind of move that information around and uh, the net install service will figure it out and make sure it's connected. So I'm going to put that there and you watch as soon as I say OK, it's going to load that. And notice right away it loads images that I already have set up. Notice I've got an image for Yosemite and I've got an image set up for Mavericks. And so it'll keep those images for you so that you can continue to add on to them. Uh, I can choose to enable uh, the net install on and I can choose the ports here. I can choose Ethernet or if I've got another interface, I can choose that as well. In my case, I've got one Ethernet interface, so that's where I'm going to get the network images um, served up. So it's only going to be clients on this particular network. But if you had multiple networks, those would show up here. I'll just go ahead and say cancel. Now I can also restrict my uh, images. If I hit restrict, I can say restrict to MAC address and I can set up certain MAC addresses uh, on which these images would install or not install. And that comes in handy in case that you, you know, if I could plus here, see I can put in a MAC address. That would come in handy uh, just in case you want to limit it only to the machines that you have on your network. If you've got people bringing their machines in and out of your network, maybe in a business situation, you may not want people using your images uh, to put on their own computers and so you can limit them then by the MAC addresses of the machines that you have on your network. I'm just going to say cancel because I don't have that issue. Uh, now down below again you'll see I've got my uh, disk images. Uh, once I highlight them I can choose which one would be the default boot image. I can even edit the image settings in here and this allows me to, uh, it shows me the install image. You can see it's a 10.10.3. It shows me the size of the image and I can choose where to make it available. I can make it available over HTTP or NFS. Uh, in my case, I'm just going to leave it at HTTP, but I do have those options there um, in terms of where I want to make it available. Uh, access, the image is visible to. I can say either all Mac models or only some. And if I say only some, what it will do is give me a drop down of all the various uh, different Mac models that are available and I can just check off the ones that I want to have um, the different images available on. So I can, if I didn't want to limit it by the Mac address of all the machines I've got, I can do it by certain Macs just by checking that off here for certain images. So if you've got older Macs that can't use the newer images, you can um, just select the particular Macs for that, those particular uh, OS X versions and then just separate it that way so that people only get the image that they can use. Uh, so it's a, it's a nice way, again, if you've got a lot of Macs to be able to manage those. I, I don't, so I'm going to leave that alone. And again, I can restrict access to the image again by MAC address, doing the same kind of thing inside here that I could do out, out generally for the net install. So I can just fine tune it down to this particular image. Uh, in the advanced area, I can set up an image index. Uh, so this is the default. Um, 
but the index can be used to uh, just distribute the load across multiple net install servers. So if you've got multiple uh, servers, you can set up these image indexes to make that easier. Again, a little more of an advanced feature. Uh, not going to come up too often unless you've got, like I said, a, a bigger network where you're distributing these across. So that's how you would uh, customize that. So let me just cancel that. Now what I want to do is show you how to create one of these images in the first place to get them in here. Uh, in order to do that, you would come up here to Tools, and you would go to System Image Utility. And you would click on that, and it loads the image utility. Uh, now, before you do that, what you need to make sure you have is a... Um, version of OS 10 already installed on your Mac and so you would want to go to the App Store here let me just pull this down and you'd want to go in and uh, find OS 10 okay and have that in there and here we've got El Capitan so we go to the El Capitan page and you would just download this so that you'd have that on your machine because that's what you would use to make the image now I've already downloaded it and so if I go to my finder window here uh, it will download it right inside here. And you can see I still have the uh, Yosemite install there, but I've also got the El Capitan install. And that's what I'm going to use to make this particular uh, image. Now, when the image is done, you know, when I select the Drobo and tell it where I want to put it, uh, on my Drobo, it creates this library folder, then Netboot, then Netboot client. Notice I don't have any there, but then Netboot install, and there's my images right there. So when I create this image with the system uh, utility, it's going to put another folder in there, and I'll show you what that looks like. So let's go ahead and go back to server, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up the image utility. So once you pull this up, it asks you for a source. Uh, you can do a package only with no OS installation, and that's not what we want. If I just hit this drop down here, you can see it create it picks up our different bootable systems. I could make an image of this server backup that I've got, uh, if I've got a disk image attached, um, and that would be if you were doing a net restore, uh, it'd be a good idea to make an image off of that where you had all your settings and everything set and ready to go, and then you could just have that restore available, and then other Macs could boot from that to restore. You know, if you get a new machine or something like that. Uh, but what we want is right here. We want this uh, install OS 10 El Capitan. And so there it lists all the different uh, information about it. Now I can say next, but before I do that, I want to show that you can customize this. If I just click on customize, it's going to bring up this workflow, um, this window here, which is basically Automator. And, it, and inside Automator, I can set up uh, different things that I want to do. I can drag different actions over. I can set up uh, specifics about the system or utilities. If I wanted to uh, partition the disk first, I could pull this over here and say, I want to partition the disk. And maybe I want more than one partition. Maybe I want to rename it, uh, have the uh, disk wiped first uh, before I install it. And so I could set up an automator workflow here that I could run that would then be included with my uh, net install image. And so it's really nice because it does allow you to do a couple extra things with it. In my case, I'm just going to do a straight up disk image, but I wanted to show you that this is possible. So I'm just going to delete that and come right back here into this system image utility. So let's go ahead and say next, since we're going to create this, and it gives me three options here. I can create a net boot image, and this allows Max to boot over the network from a server-based disk image. So in other words, it would be creating an OS X image that then if I accessed any Mac on my network, I would hold down the option key and then boot from the server and use an image on the server uh, to run my Mac with. Now, that usually comes in handy for things maybe like labs and stuff like that where you want everybody to get a specific image. Um, but you have to take into consideration your bandwidth and how slow it might go and those sorts of things. So it's not always the most optimal. I've got the net install image, and that's what I'm doing now. It'll install OS 10 over the network from a hosted disk image, or the net, install, uh, net restore image, where it restore, restores a volume over the network from an Apple software restore disk image. And so uh, in this case, we're doing the net install image, so that's what we're after. So we'll say next. So it's going to ask us to agree to the software license, so we're going to say that. And I can add any configuration profiles or packages. Again, if I just click the plus here, it's going to give me this, and if I had any other packages or configuration profiles, I could add those in here to customize it. I'm going to cancel because I don't in this case, but if I wanted to do that, I could add that in there. All right, so we're going to say Next. And so now I'm going to choose a couple of things. I can uh, optionally choose 
uh, how the system configuration options are applied if the settings aren't defined it's just going to be applied to, uh, not be applied to the system so I can say computer host names and so this is a file that can uh, that contains computer uh, names and host names and stuff like that I can generate unique computer names if I want to have that happen uh, or I can do it, I can match to the client after the install. And that's if I wanted to, to do a specific there. I don't need that, so I'm going to say next. And so I can add directory server information in here if I want to have that. Uh, I don't need that. And I can do automation settings. So I can automatically install certain um, Apple scripts or things like that if I want. I don't need to do that. And you can see how this has changed a little bit in El Capitan that it has um, you know, broken this down into various things instead of just sending you to this general automator window that it did before. Okay, so now we're on the image settings, so we're going to name it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, back this out and call it OS 10 El Capitan, and there's my description there. And I can assign a random image index if I want to. Uh, I can say that the image will be served from multiple servers, which in my case it's not, but if you've got more than one server, maybe you've got redundancy across different subnets, you could do that. Uh, or I can assign a specific image index if I want to have it have one myself that I'm assigning. In this case, I'm just going to assign a random one. I'm fine with that, and I will say next. And so now it's going to say choose the models that can start up using this image. And so right in here, I can even customize again which Mac models are able to start up from it so they do build it into the image utility itself so that those settings will automatically be done you notice I showed you the settings earlier for the image they have them built into the image creation now which is kinda nice because then everything's taken care of for you I'm gonna leave everything alone at default and say next and then I can filter clients by MAC address. Again, that's that setting that I showed you earlier inside the uh, image settings. Uh, I'm just going to allow everybody. There's no ones I want to deny or allow. I'm just going to say next. And so now it's going to ask me where, how to save the target and where to save it. And remember, we need to save it in this netboot SPO because that's where we have it, right? It's going to go in a, into a folder next to these, and it's on my Drovo. That's where I want it. So we're going to go ahead and say save. And so now it's going to start the image creation process. First, I've got to authenticate. Okay, now that I've authenticated, I'm going to say OK. And now it's starting to create the disk image. And so it's going to tell me you know, how much time it's taking to complete uh, the particular uh, disk image. And this is moving at a, a really good clip. And so it's a little faster in creating the uh, disk images than the ones that I've used in the past. And so they've definitely improved the entire system and made it a little bit, just like I said, a little bit easier to do all of these customizations and get it set up by walking you through all the settings in the creation process. And then on top of that, like I said, it's pretty speedy in creating the disk image. So I'm gonna let this run all the way through uh, until it's done. And it looks like it's finalizing the disk image there. And so it should be done here in a few seconds. So once that's done, I will show you what it looks like once it's complete. Okay, so the image creation was successful. You can see the disk image is ready to be used. Uh, I could start over if I wanted to do another one, but I'm just going to say done. And you'll notice that my El Capitan image is set right here. And so now if I want to make that one my uh, default, I can come in here and say use as default boot image. And you can see now it shows that one as the default. Uh, again, I can edit it and all that like I showed before. Now one more thing that is in here is the connections area. And this is where I would see any connections that were made. So when uh, individuals connected to a net install image, it will show their host name, the IP address, and the status, uh, you know, in terms of where things are going, and then the progress of the install. So I can monitor all of my different net install uh, information here. Now, when uh, another user boots uh, into the net install image, they would do that either by booting their machine and holding down the option key, and it would show your images, uh, or they could go into system preferences. Let me just show you that real quick here. If they went into system preferences and you went into your uh, startup disk right here, it would show up here your different uh, net install images that would be available, and then the individuals would just select those and boot from them. In my case, it's not showing because this is the actual server itself, but on their machines, it would show right here. So let me just put that down. Come back here. 
So that's the uh, net install service. Again, all I do is throw the switch to make it live, and you can see that it'll be available in the startup pane of system preferences for OS X clients. And now my images are ready to go. I've got the green light, and they're ready to serve up to my clients. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own server, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.